Okay. 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 We are recording. Well, we're going to start from the beginning again. Uh, this is Bob Biggs. I have with me Kim Ogle, our newest Rotarian member. And we are going to have a little question and answer interview uh, for the next 15 or 20 minutes or so. Uh, I hope that you will enjoy this and uh, learn a little bit more about Kim Ogle. And uh, today is, by the way, uh, March 12th, uh, 2021. So uh, we're not sure when this uh, recording will actually be shown, but that'll give you some sort of frame of reference as far as when we did the recording for an Oxford Rotary program. So just uh, Kim will begin by saying welcome. Glad you're here with us today and willing to uh, be uh, interviewed and recorded. So uh, first uh, question we have for you is, uh, could you tell us uh, where you were born and uh, what was your family life like growing up and uh, how many uh, siblings if you have any? So go ahead. Okay, well, uh, this probably my family life could probably take up the uh, 15 to 20 minutes allotment, um, that in of itself. But uh, I was actually born in Hamilton, but raised in Darktown. Uh, I'm a lifelong local resident. Um, and my family of origin uh, in Darktown, uh, who all I grew up with, um, I grew up in a household with my parents and I have an older brother, Rob, and also included in that household were my grandparents, uh, Walter and Leela Alston. Um, those of you who uh, are baseball fans, and uh, we talked about that, uh, was the manager of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Also within that household uh, was my um, grandmother, Leela Alston's mother. So I had a great grandmother living there. And across the street in Dartown was my grandfather, Walter's, parents. So I had a complete set of great grandparents living across the street. So I was surrounded by a um, uh, very large loving family uh, growing up in Darktown. Of course, my grandparents were only in the household uh, at that time from, depending if they were in the World Series or not, um, from mid-October until February. Uh, and then we spent some time every year in LA. And as I got older, I spent a little bit more time in LA and watched the Dodgers. So, um, so that was kind of an interesting and uh, different uh, lifestyle growing up. Kim, I didn't realize you had so many family members in our town. You must have been 50% of the population of that little community over there. <laughs> Absolutely. And as a matter of fact, my great grandfather's brother also lived in Dark Town. So I definitely was surrounded by family. I couldn't get away with much in uh, Dark Town uh, when I was a kid because family members and small community. Um, usually if we did something to get in trouble with, uh, my parents knew before I even got home. So <laughs> I understand well, that's what, that's what we call porch patrol. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, tell us a little bit about your family status, spouse, any kids, uh, where and what are they doing? If you yeah. Any? Uh, no kids. Uh, I actually, I have a partner. Um, we live out on, uh, Buck Paxson Road on 40 acres. Um, so what we like to say are our kids, we have six goats, three dogs, uh, five barn cats, and one indoor cat. So um, no uh, kids that we have to worry about sending off to college, but um, our vet bills are probably as expensive as sending a kid to college sometimes. <laughs> is that all uh, the land out there, the 40 acres, is that tillable? Do you rent that land out to a farmer or is it a uh, Yeah, area? no, actually none of it is tillable. Um, we, it is all creek and woods. Our property, um, our property line actually abuts to Houston Woods. So uh, it is all uh, woods and um, creek and beautiful hiking area. Uh, we just love it out there. Well, you may get a few phone calls from some Rotarians that like to camp and fish. Uh, so now that they know <laughs> about uh, your woods and your creek out there. So Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's just beautiful. It's gorgeous uh, property out there. All right. Uh, moving on to the next question. Uh, could you tell us about your educational career? Uh, where and what were your majors? Sure. Um, uh, again, so you have uh, like 20 minutes of uh, my education. Um, I, I, when I first started elementary school in Collinsville, my, um, I, I cried every day. I didn't want to go to school. But once my dad said, once I got you started, I couldn't get you to stop. So um, I have a uh, bachelor's degree from Miami in education, social studies education. 
I have a master's degree from Miami in college student personnel services. And then uh, most recently, I have a PhD from Miami in uh, gerontology, um, studying end-of-life issues for older adults. In between that, uh, I also have a uh, certificate in thanatology, the study of um, death, dying, grief, and bereavement from Hood College. And I also have an associate arts uh, degree in mortuary science from Cincinnati College of Mortuary Science. Okay, and that was, I think, uh, part of your program presentation earlier to the Rotary Club. So we Correct, learned yes. a lot about that. Yes. Yes, yeah. Uh, so what was your first job as a child or a young adult and uh, your first job out of college? And could you describe that experience? Sure. Um, well, my first uh, first job ever uh, was working as uh, teaching tennis. Um, this was in high school and right out of high school during the summer. I was teaching school and then I would, um, excuse me a second. I'm doing an interview with someone. Oh, yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, I taught tennis and uh, down in Hamilton at Riverside Racquet Club and um, also New London um, Swim and Tennis Club. Um, so that was a great way to get to know a lot of people in the Hamilton area. Um, right out of college, uh, I worked uh, for Ken Bogart uh, in the registrar's office. And that was just a great experience for me, um, working for Ken. That was back in the day when um, scheduling was done all by hand. Um, <laughs> it, they, it was run through a computer, but anytime there were changes students wanted to make to their schedule, uh, we personally pulled out their Scantron, made the changes. But more importantly, what was so great about that was the lifelong friendship I developed with Ken and Joanne Bogart from that. Um, and just kind of also seeing the inner workings of Miami. Um, I can truly say that probably uh, the better part of my working life has been associated with Miami in one way or another. So I am a uh, true, uh, some people say I might lead Dodger blue, but I also lead Miami red too. So I've done a lot with Miami. Okay, as a follow-up, as far as uh, maybe a, a job, uh, if you want to call it that, uh, with uh, yeah. your grandfather and the Dodgers, I got a question for you. Were you ever like a bat girl uh, for the Dodgers uh, out there at, in Los <laughs> Angeles? <laughs> yeah, well, I wish. Um, you know, I was born a little bit before my time that way. Uh, my brother got to do all that fun stuff. Uh, he um, got to sit on the bench and... Um, actually take infield and batting practice with the Dodgers. Um, back in those days, uh, no girls, they didn't even have bat girls or bat or ball girls back then. Um, so it wasn't until I was an adult that they started to allow that to happen. Um, my grandfather, and don't tell my brother this, but my grandfather always said that I had a little bit more athletic ability than my brother did. And um, <laughs> I, I played my share of baseball. I didn't play, well, I did play some softball, but I grew up playing baseball. And I loved it and um, still love baseball. We all do. Uh, yeah. Never gets old. Right? No, never gets old. Favorite, it's America's favorite pastime. Yes. Uh, Tell us about your current uh, or former profession and what brought you to it. Sure. Um, so um, at, there was a point in time after teaching school and doing a few other things that uh, I saw my dad in the funeral business. And that's when I really um, found something that I, I felt I, I could really, it matched my skills, wanting to help people um, and saw the enjoyment that he got out of it and the number of people that he got to meet. And um, it was through working in the funeral home uh, close to 20 years with my dad that I saw that, you know, we, you get very close to a family in that short period of time when someone has a loss. Um, mm -hmm. And you get close and you tr try and serve them during the funeral. And then you kind of send people off out into the world almost, and there was no follow-up to that. And it's that follow-up that, um, that has led me to do what I'm doing now, which is basically doing grief support and bereavement and end-of-life planning. 
I also saw during that time that, um, you know, we as Americans, we don't like to talk about end of life and death and dying. And there really is um, good deaths and bad deaths. And um, I've seen some pretty bad deaths and we can do it better. And I, you know, if we can, if I can help one person, um, either from their grief and bereavement or to have their goals of care met towards the end of life to make it so that it is something um, that is a little bit more peaceful. I, you know, we prepare nine months to have babies and it's great and it's a big celebration, um, but we don't plan at all for the end. And uh, if we plan a little bit, it, it can go a little bit it, smoother. It's always going to be hard. It's always going to be traumatic. It's always going to be difficult, but um, there are ways to make it less difficult. And so it was during that working with as a funeral director that kind of inspired me to do what I'm doing now. Good for you. Good for you. Uh, what are some things that you would like for Rotarians to know about you or may even surprise some of us? Okay. <laughs> well, uh, I think probably um, one thing that's sort of interesting uh, is that uh, after I left funeral directing, I spent uh, almost a year, not quite, about nine months uh, living in the Upper East Side of New York City um, and worked as a personal assistant for a musician, uh, Michael Feinstein. And um, living in New York was quite a, an exciting adventure. Um, I lived right near Fifth Avenue. I mean, it was Spike Lee was my neighbor. Um, but probably one of the more interesting things that um, I did was New Year's Eve, uh, the guy I worked for, Michael, was performing, and um, I, my job that day was to take care of Liza Minnelli. Um, now, some of the younger people may not know who Liza Minnelli is, but um, she was a pretty big-time star uh, at one point, and um, let's just say it was truly an experience um my goodness um she was a little difficult she stiffed me for a cab ride um, <laughs> um she uh yeah it, it it was uh very interesting that evening um she wanted to sing a certain song and didn't know what the lyrics were and had me trying to listen to things and try and listen to a recording and write down the lyrics and uh, she was telling me one thing and what I was hearing was different. It, 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 it was a very stressful evening to say the least. So <laughs> but, uh, it was also an experience and having that opportunity to work, to work with Michael, I met um, so many really extraordinary people um, and it was a, a, an excellent uh, adventure and uh, an excellent uh, trip that I'll never, never forget those nine months, that's for sure. Well, that sounds really exciting. I can't imagine. You mentioned Spike Lee. Yeah. Him being my next door neighbor. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> what that must have been like. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, he, I, I had to shovel snow uh, often while I was there, and he always thanked me. He was very kind, and, uh, you know, um, some celebrities, I uh, was not always treated that way, but I will say Spike Lee always took time to say hello ask how I was doing, and always thank me for whatever I was doing. So that was kind of a amazing. cool thing. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Uh, so what motivated you to join R Rotary? Um, well, since I um, left the funeral business and spent time at Miami working on my PhD, coming back from New York, um, and no longer being in the funeral business, I was looking for a way to re-engage with the community. And... Um, I'd always heard great things and knew some Rotarians and um, thought, wow, you know, this would be a great way for me to um, re-engage with some people, um, get to know some people, um, and at the same time do, um, my big thing is I love the Oxford community. Um, I've grown up here. I love the people of Oxford and um, just a way to give back to the Oxford community. And I thought this, uh, people like, you, Bob, are part of this. And I thought, well, this is that that's a great organization. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I know you're new to Rotary. This question um, maybe for some of our other Rotarians that are been around a while, but 
uh, any highlights uh, in Rotary and your, your so few weeks and months with us yeah. and so forth? Any highlights, yeah, and especially so meeting remotely instead of in person, but any highlights you can think of that you could reflect on? Yeah, well, I just think getting together um, every Wednesday is kind of a, you know, just to engage with others. We've all been kind of locked down, and I live out. My, my big uh, adventure these days is going to Kroger's and um, <laughs> as normal. Um, so it's kind of nice just to see a different group of people and interact with them, and, and the programs have been great. Uh, I've enjoyed every one of them, and um, so I don't, I can't say any great highlights, but I, I have truly enjoyed being a part of this so far, and I'm, I'm still very new, so, and I'm looking forward to becoming more involved, uh, and I can't wait until we can start meeting back at La Rosa's. We hope that'll be sometime soon, maybe this summer. Yeah, that, that would be great, yeah. Well, okay, you haven't mentioned uh, any family members that have been Rotarians. Do you have any family members who uh, have been Rotarians or associated with Rotary? Uh, my dad was a Rotarian, actually. Um, this was several years ago. Well, when he first got into the funeral business, he was a Rotarian. And I'm not sure how many years. That was when they had an attendance um, requirement. And being a funeral director, oftentimes... Um, yeah, that conflicted, and so he uh, ended up leaving. But I, he was another reason when I was told that um, I had an opportunity to join. He was like, "Oh, you need to do that. They're great, great people in Rotary, and it was a great organization." So, and of course, that was with which Rotary Club? Uh, in Oxford. Uh, I don't, yeah. you know, back in the day. That's all I know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, we're sure he's very proud and excited that you've joined the Oxford Rotary Club. So. Yeah, definitely. Sure, and tell him we all said hello. Yes, I, I sure uh, will. Another uh, question for you. If you could, tell us about some of your other community or professional volunteer engagements uh, during your lifetime. Yeah, um, I've been the, on the Oxford uh, Chamber for a number of years. Um, I was on for the first time through when we first started the wine festival. I was uh, part of the chamber when that very first came about. Um, so I've done, I did that. I, I did two stints on the Oxford Chamber. Um, been involved with the Oxford Senior Center, um, doing some work there, just volunteer work there. Uh, many long years ago, I was on the uh, Oxford United Way. Um, so I've done some community work here within the Oxford uh, area, and um, and then I am part of a professional organization, the um, Association of Deaf Educa Educators and Counselors, and um, I've been on a couple of committees with them volunteering to do some of the writing of the tests uh, that are required in order to get some certification with them. Uh, and always volunteer at their conference every year. Of course, we've been virtual for the last two uh, years, so uh, not doing uh, as much there. So I have been um, historically involved in the community, and um, so this is just another engagement, that uh, community engagement that I hope to uh, continue. Great, great. Well, Kim, thank you very much. Uh, great inaugural interview here. And uh, thank you and welcome again to the Oxford Rotary Club. We look forward to getting you more involved with the club and the membership and so forth and being an active uh, part of uh, Oxford Rotary. And, and now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to end this recording, but we will allow uh, some of our fellow Rotarians to ask you in person uh, some questions based upon maybe some things that you have said uh, today that, is, uh, that have piqued their interest. So. With that, again, we'll, we'll sign off here and say many thanks again. Kim Ogle, welcome to Oxford Rotary. Uh, so we'll uh, wrap it up and uh, turn it over to our president to uh, see if there's any questions from our fellow Rotarians, okay? Thank you, Kim. Thanks, thank you so much, Bob. Uh, Kim, and, Kim and, and Bob and Randy, thank you for that. That was so much fun. Um, and Kim, you, you know, thank you for being the first out of the gate. You know that that that's, that speaks uh, to your your courage. So, <laughs> well, thank you. Does anybody have any questions uh, that that a follow up basis for Kim? So, Kim, this is Lee Fisher again. Thanks, and thanks to Bob. Yeah. Uh, how did you get hired as 
with that New York period? Were you a personal trainer, a personal coach? Uh, did, they, <laughs> did they pick you up on the side of the road somewhere and say, come to New York? How, how did that happen? Yeah, yeah very interesting. Uh, years ago, um, some of you people may remember the sports center that was here in town. And uh, family, the, the Flannery family, uh, Vernon uh, Flannery owned that. And that's how I got involved with tennis. I started playing tennis with that family. Um, and so their son, Terrence, who's a little bit younger than I, but we um, were tennis buddies and we played a lot of tennis together. And so Terrence, became the business manager for Michael Feinstein. And so he, um, so years, and we stayed in touch. We were like best friends forever. And uh, we, and still are, and continue to have a relationship. Well, he said, Michael needs a personal assistant. Would you be willing to give it a try? And I'm like, well, Sure. He said, yeah, you get to live in New York and all this stuff. Well, yeah. And trust me, being a personal assistant, you name it, I did it for him, including laying out his clothes every night uh, for him to get dressed, to helping him get dressed for um, his performance every night. He, he had a nightclub in New York City. Uh, he performed um, quite often, usually at Christmas time, but we flew all over the United States. Uh, he had his own private plane that we flew in. I lugged his luggage everywhere, um, <laughs> went food shopping for him. He was vegan, uh, which was sometimes difficult to, to figure out exactly what he had. The hardest thing to do was I did his hair and makeup and I kept telling him, I said, you know, <laughs> Um, if you lie down, I'm used to doing this for dead people, not really for live people. So I'm not the best at this. So, <laughs> but I got better at it. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's how my connection and Marty knows, Marty uh, knows the Flannery's uh, is related to them actually. So anyway, it's from a lifelong friend is how that, that all came about. Anyone else have a question? Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah. Kim, thank you again for this delightful story of yours. <laughs> We're going to put a book in Lane Library in your honor. Well, thank uh, you. And, and um, I'm trying to remember all the degrees that you have, but I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much. Uh, everybody has to give a hand. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hey, um, uh, Jonathan's got a uh, presentation that we'll get to in just a minute. 